you. So I would like also to thank the organizer for their invitation. Even if I am a neighbor, it's different communities, so it's not so easy <laughs> to talk. So nothing random in my, uh, in my talk. It's purely the, the deterministic model. So it's something difficult to explain here. And so it's a joint work that we, we started maybe five years ago with, uh, with uh, no. So with François Cornelis, which is a radiologist in the uh, University Hospital, uh, Jean Palucière, which is uh, the coordinator of the imaging department of the uh, Institut Garbounier. Institut Garbounier is, uh, is a hospital in Bordeaux specialized in cancer therapy. And Angelo Iolo, Julien Juganus, Guillaume Lefebvre, Damiano Lombardi, and Olivier Sou are uh, applied mathematicians. So basically, we are all coming from the community of computational fluid dynamics. So if you remember yesterday's first talk, where the guys are, are writing a huge system of uh, ugly equations and using supercomputer. So I try to uh, explain to you today what we can do in this, uh, using this kind of tool. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it was supposed to be. Uh, I had them. It doesn't have a problem. Okay, the examples that I, I want to show you is this one. It was a. Uh, it's uh, three scanners, to the three CT scans of a lung metastasis, which is here, here, and here, of a bladder tumor. And so it's without treatment. The patient has been uh, only uh, monitored between these two scans here. And after that, it was sent to, uh, to Institut Bergenier to see if some uh, radio frequency ablation was possible in this case. So the uh, medical oncologist decided to uh, send the patient to Bergenier here. And the time to get an appointment, you know the appointment in the, <coughs> the hospital usually is not so, not so easy to have. They obtain, uh, when they did the, the CT scan in order to control the evolution, they obtained this, uh, this picture here, and it was too late to do a radio frequency ablation. So you, you, after that, you have to, to think more, more invasive therapy, complete surgery, or uh, chemotherapy, and so on. And so the question that asked us uh, Palucier at this time was, if I give you this image here and this in here, are you able to estimate the growth that will occur a few months later? So that is uh, the first question that he, he asked us. And so we tried to, uh, so I come back. Uh, we tried to extend a little bit this question. And so the, the problem I want to, uh, to deal with is for a given patient, for a given pathology, uh, uh, is, it able, uh, is it possible to answer this kind of questions? So when to start the treatment, when to stop the treatment, and when to change the treatment. So I want to do that patient by patient. So, it's uh, almost, uh, if I say it like that, it's almost science fiction. So it's, uh, I have no hope to solve this kind of question uh, in general. And I want to show you in some particular cases that maybe uh, we can give at least some insight on the answer. So the general strategy that we, that we use is first we're going to write some nonlinear partial differential equation model in order to describe the tumor growth. So we are coming all from uh, computational flood dynamics. We use general law of continuum. Uh, mechanics in order to write the system. It's very important that we, we, we put some biological knowledge into this kind of system. So we, we try to describe at least uh, partially uh, the, the biological reality. So I will show you some examples later how we can do that. Then we, we use longitudinal multimodal data, may, mainly coming from the medical imaging, because it's what you have when you receive a patient, you have MRI, you have CT scan, you have a PET scan. And so image is a lot of information. And what we can use is not, not only one image. If you give me only one image, I'm completely unable to, to estimate the evolution. But we're going to use some uh, logic in that series of, uh, of image. That means different image of the same patient at different time. So we, uh, we need a partial evolution of the, of the pathology. And then with this complex data and with this complex system, we perform data simulation techniques. Basically, the same kind of problem that, uh, that Adeline showed before. 
once you have performed data assimilation, you are able to make the simulation and to try to make a, a prediction. Okay? Let's see in an example uh, how it works. So the main features that, uh, that we would like to use uh, in, uh, in our model is uh, our, uh, on, in this slide. Basically, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to say that cancer cells are growing in some, uh, in some uh, rapid way and that they are sensible to some growth signal. I also need to include uh, the angiogenesis process that has a key, uh, really a key role in the, in the tumor growth. So we need to model in some sense angiogenesis. So the angiogenesis process is something that is very, very, very complex. Uh, not, uh, not understood right now. So we're going to have to simplify the, the existing model on, uh, on angiogenesis. And then uh, we will need to, to consider different, uh, different types of cells, so if I cells, KSM cells, and of course healthy tissue, and to try to build some interaction between all these, uh, all these quantities. So the, for the example of the metastasis to the lung, so what will be the information that we put in my uh, in my PDE model? So I give you some uh, some, uh, some picture coming from uh, from the anapat uh, from Bernier. So it's a normal uh, histology of a lung. So a different scale, it's just a zoom here. And there are two lesions to the to the lung. The first one corresponds to a primary tumor, and you can see in the, if you used to see this kind of tumor, you can see in the center of the tumor you have really the tumoral part. And then you have the LC, LC tissues around. And here you have something in, uh, in between that is maybe not really tumor, but it's not LC tissue anymore. Some diffusive, uh, some dis diffusive part of the tumor. And if you look that on CT scan, you obtain something, you see clearly something in the, in the middle, LC tissues around, and you have some, some part in between that is, uh, that is uh, less clear. On the other hand, if you look to metastasis now, metastasis of some distance to tumor to the lens is the metastasis of the thyroid, you obtain something which is very clear. So you have, here it's uh, the metastasis, here it's the LC tissue, and the, the way you comes from LC tissue to metastasis, it's very sharp. Okay, you have no, uh, no transition zone. Here it's very, very really uh, straight. And so this information, we will put this information in the model. And for different types of lesions, uh, for primary, uh, primary tumor or for metastasis, we will use completely different models, completely different PD models. Here, basically, we say that you have growth of cells, and the cells are just pushing the healthy tissues. And here, you have something that will be described as some reaction diffusion equation. So in order to model this, uh, this part here, which is, uh, which is diffusive. So this is the way, basically, we put information in the PD model on the biology of the tumor. Of the tumor. So now let's go into the equation just to see what <coughs> how it looks like. We we take one uh, one class of proliferating uh, phase that we call P. It's cells that, uh, that can divide. So, so they divide with a non-constant uh, proliferative uh, rate, and this proliferating rate depends on the quantity of oxygen. Well, you, it's a summary of different factors. Uh, let's call it oxygen. So you have some growth factor that can. Uh, of course, uh, responsible for the <coughs> of the of the growth rate. Uh, we introduce a VOGF-like uh, marker that, are secre that is secreted by the tumor cells, especially on the epoxy one, and this VOGF-like uh, factor uh, will be responsible for the angiogenesis. And then, once you have the angiogenesis, you have again a concentration of oxygen that will have an influence of the of the of the growth. Rate. Okay, and now I have, so I, I give you, uh, in this summary here, I have described the, the way the cell will, uh, will proliferate. I will, now I need to explain how the, this will have an influence on the growth of the tumor. And so I introduce, uh, I will introduce uh, some global velocity, and this velocity has nothing to do with some uh, velocity of the cells, it's just the global velocity that will describe the evolution between one CT scan to another. Okay, when you have uh, on the, I show you the, the metastasis is growing, and so you can explain this growth just by a velocity field that transforms the first picture into the second one. So this, this velocity that I will, uh, I will link to the, to the growth rate. 
So this is the equation. It's, it's a very simple model of a PD equation compared to that uh, Adeline was uh, speaking before. Uh, you have here, this equation here, if you put zero, it just means that you have concentration of, uh, concentration of mass. So if you used to do a continuous mechanics, it's conservation, conservation of mass, conservation of quantity, if you put zero. In the case of tumor growth, you don't have conservation, you have proliferation. In case you are in a proliferation uh, rate, is positive. And you can have a death rate if you have, because of hypoxia, if you have necrosis, or if you apply a, a treatment, uh, the death, uh, the, this quantity here will, will give you, with a minus, the death of the, of the cell. So this pro uh, proliferation rate or death rate is linked to the quantity of oxygen, how it is done. So forget that, uh, the, the formula is uh, hyperbolic tension. You just introduce a threshold here. If you are above the threshold, the, the, the proliferation rate is strictly positive and you have growth. If you are above the threshold, the, above the threshold, the death rate is negative, is positive, and then you, you die. Okay? And this, this, uh, this fact is continuous. So you can have, depends on the position where you are in the tumor, you can have death or proliferation. You can have necrosis and proliferation. Okay? Now I have to give you the way I, uh, I compute the velocity. The way I compute the velocity is the following one. I compute the divergence of the velocity. And the divergence of the velocity is this term here. It's uh, the increase of volume. In continuous mechanics, it's classical. The divergence of the velocity field corresponds to the increase uh, to, to the volume, uh, the variation of the volume. It's not enough to have V to compute its velocity. Okay, you need to, uh, to, to introduce the closure. And so the closure relation for this system is uh, that we took uh, Darcy's law in this case. And these laws just say that, forget the coefficient that is in front of the gradient, you just say that the velocity is equal to minus the gradient of the pressure. It just says that you have some pressure in the medium, and so if the pressure is bigger inside than outside, you have a uh, push. When if you have a uh, force from uh, inside to outside, the cell uh, has, to, has to move. Okay? So increase of pressure gives you movement. It's uh, the only thing. And then this system here of its two couples of ODE, basically, uh, is, it's a, some kind of a nano model of, uh, of angiogenesis. And so you, 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 you have to think to Xi as being a quantity, a global quantity of the OGF. And this quantity is related to the, the number of proliferating cells. And this coefficient here gives you the quantification of P cells that are in, uh, in epoxy or not. Okay? And N, here you recover N, the vascularization of the quantity of oxygen, by just saying that you have consumption by the, the tumor cell, and you have creation of the vascularization. So, proportional to the, to the uh, VHF quantity, and also to the epoxy uh, tumor cell. Okay. Uh, right. uh, what is exactly the velocity? It's a vector, or I... Yes, it's a vector. Uh, it's a vector. Okay. Was it, it's a three-dimensional, or...? Yes, it's a three-dimensional vector. This curve, you, if you take the... If you reconstruct the tumor from the six scan, it gives you the, the, the vector field that you have to apply to transform one volume into another. And, and what is P? Is it exactly. This one, it's a, it's a scalar, scalar function. It's a scalar. Yeah, so when you take the radiant, you obtain something which is a vector. It's a model that is classical in, uh, for uh, flows in porous media. In fact. It's the simplest way to say that when you push, uh, you create a model. Okay, and so this system, you can check that this system is closed. If you know, if you know uh, n, you can compute p. Once you know p, <coughs> you can uh, compute the velocity v. Once you uh, know v and p, you can compute Xi and N, and again, you can, you can go back to P. Okay? So exactly the way we compute the solution. Now, what, are the, what is the problem? The problem is to find the parameter. We have around six or seven parameters, eight, in such a way that the numerical prediction, so in black here, is uh, as near as possible to the data. The data, what are the data? The data is that we measure on the CT scan. So we work on the image, pixel by pixel, and we reconstruct the, the the data in uh, so red, the so density of cells that you recover from the CT scale, cell by pixel, and in black, it's a numerical solution. And so we try to find the coefficient in order 
to obtain the best result here. Okay? Of course, if you want to do that, it's an inverse problem. You have to, uh, you have to call several times uh, the, the function. That means you have to solve the PDE system a lot of time. And so what we use, it's, uh, it's a model reduction technique. So we transform the, the PDE system into an ordinary differential equation system. So the, the large part of the work is done here, in fact, because it's, uh, you have to do a lot of computation in order to, to, to make this uh, makes this transformation and then we solve the inverse problem for the reduced uh, for the reduced model. Okay. The way we do that is just using some stochastic algorithm to Monte Carlo and uh, basically Monte Carlo algorithm or some uh, genetic algorithm and then we end up to, so we, we end the process by using a gradient a gradient algorithm in order to find the, the coefficient. What are the results? So this is uh, uh, again a lung metastasis of the TY without treatment. So as you can see, the scale is absolutely not the same on the, uh, the first, uh, first example I show you. First example, it was in six months. Here it's in four years, basically. And the metastasis is here, here, uh, here, and here. And this fashion, as you can see, has, uh, has a several metastases. Uh, I think 20 or 25. Like so what they do, they, they follow, uh, follow in, uh, regularly. And when the metastasis is growing, they just burn it by a uh, Radio frequency ablation. And so the exercise that we did is using these two scans here, are we able to recover these two ones? Okay? Only using these two, uh, two images, are we able to find a uh, <coughs> So I present to you the result in, uh, in this slide. Here you have the months, okay? so time in months. As you can see, it's almost uh, more than four years. And here you have the volume of the metastasis. The circle here are the volumes that are measured on the CT scan, okay, on the real one, and the black curves is the volume that is reconstructed by the numerical simulation. So we use only the two first, uh, the two first image, and the reconstruction of the volume, as you can see, is not bad. Uh, we are particularly proud of this point here because we did uh, the simulation before they made the exam. Okay, so we first made the simulation, and then they made. You obtain, if you look now uh, geometrically what, what, what you obtain, so this is uh, the, the real tumor that is obtained from the CT scan, so after uh, registration and segmentation, so extraction from the, 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 from the CT scan, and then the tumor that you compute with, uh, with the model. Uh, again, for the, the last two, uh, the last two points. So it's far from being perfect. When you come from free mechanics, you say it's not perfect. Here in this context, it's not too bad. Another test case is a patient, so the same patient with the two metastases in the two lungs. It's a kidney, kidney tumor initially. So metastasis here, here, and here in the left lung, and here in the right lung, here. And again, we did the same exercise using only the two first, the scan, as I would say, uh, at the same time. So using the, the, two, uh, the two first scans. Uh, each lung, and again, we do the same simulation process. So we have to do it again for each patient. It's not, uh, it's not done once and then you, you compute, okay? And the result is here. So for the, uh, for the right lung that was on, uh, on the left, you obtain uh, this kind of curve here. Again, same, uh, the same thing as before. The circle are the volume measured on the CT scan and the continuous curve is the numerical prediction. Here's the same, except the fact that I have drawn two curves in this case because uh, we, uh, we have obtained uh, two different uh, set of values of the parameter in this case. One gives the right answer, the other one is completely false. The reason here is, prob is probably uh, because uh, you have a huge increase of the volume, in fact, uh, between the two, uh, the two first CT scans. So uh, an increase of almost 400%, which is too high. And the last case, that uh, was the first one, Historically, same kind of result. Uh, the estimate is not so good if you look in this direction, but if you look in this one, it's much better. So we look in this one in this case. Geometrically, it's the same. And they made uh, chemotherapy after uh, this patient. And so uh, we have uh, some CT scan in the, during the treatment and at the end of the treatment. And so we did the same exercise using this scan here. 
the scan in between the treatment and to try to estimate the effect of the chemotherapy. And here, so the cross are the volume measure on the CT scan, and the blue curve is the prediction. As you can see, it's not too bad at the gate. Conclusion. <laughs> in fact, I didn't know uh, how much time I, I had before. I just prepare a little bit more. <laughs> what we have to do? So for the lung, a little bit more, it was it. I was ready for two hours. <laughs> Never know. For the lung, what we have to do? First, we, uh, we perform the evaluation of the procedure on a large set of cases. So, uh, Jean Palucier and François Carmelis have selected 20 patients in the Bernier, and so uh, Barry Martin, which is somewhere here, uh, is in charge of uh, making the evaluation of the process on these uh, 20 days that are very uh, coming from uh, several pathologies. We want to, uh, to perform some extension to primary tumor and to, uh, to estimate the early response to have, uh, to, to have a stun. It's a collaboration again with Bergonier, and we will use perfusion MRI. So we have to extend that, <coughs> not only on the scan, but also to perfusion MRI. And uh, also extension to primary tumor, evaluated system uh, with the TEP scan. So we have also to see what is going on on the TEP. And so we did something on the liver also. So I have the time uh, today to explain something on the, on the liver. We have to work on the texture of the image, so it's something we, we started to do in the collaboration with the General Electric in Buc, but to see if we can uh, uh, modify the, uh, the tools that they have on the MRI or on the CT to prevent the heterogeneity of the tumor, because it's a key uh, for some lesions, for example, metastasis to the liver, it's a key argument to have something on structure of the metastasis. And for the end of the study. 